Hi there, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how we can utilize uh, AWS Open Source Service, what is Open Source Service, uh, for what we are using an alternative to. And along with the introduction, I'll show you how to set up and manage our own cluster. And then a small demo in order to show you how Open Search works. So let's proceed. So it is a distributed community driven Apache 2.0 license. It is a 100% open source uh, search and analytics suite that is being used. And there are many use cases for it, like real time application monitoring, log analytics, any kind of uh, analytics you want to perform. You want to per perform the search operations on the log data of certain application or the data being collected from the servers that you want to analyze and prepare the strategy depending upon those logs. So it also provides you a highly scalable system for providing the fast access, as well as a good response to large volumes of data with a, like a complete visualization, like in the form of charts, in the form of some graphics and some values. You can uh, filter those records and filter those graphics and all. It's quite handy tool. So it will be having a complete dashboard in which we'll be exploring the, all the options. So it makes it quite easy to you know filter the records, search the records, and filter by date, filter by certain conditions, fields that are being there in the data. We can view the raw data also, and we can do the analysis based upon that. So lots of things are there. So it is also powered by Apache uh search library that supports a number of search and analytic capabilities such as k nearest neighbor search sql uh, animal detection machine learning commons so these are the things that are being covered and many more are there that is being covered in the open search so it helps you to easily ingest secure search and aggregate your data why we should use it so we should in order to easily ingest secure and search we, in order to aggregate our data so we can use this open source service. So we can, like, as I mentioned to you, like we will having a dashboard in which we can view and analyze the data for a certain number of use cases, like for application search, enterprise search, log analytic, analytics and all, we can utilize it. So before like a, a common term that open search and elastic search, both search and analytics engines, they both of them they share the common history they're having. So just a small like you know comparison. So it was Elasticsearch that was being initially developed as an open source for search and analytics engine. So it gained quite popularity and it started getting like you know having a scalable nature, making it suitable for various applications for search, log analytics, and real time data analysis. But in 2021, there were some concerns in the open source community about the Elastic changing the license of some components from Apache 2.0 to side public license. Now, these license things are quite in-depth. I'm not going into details of this licensing and all, so which is not recognized by the open source license by the open source initiative. So in response to this, the community forked the last Apache license version of Elasticsearch. Then from 2021 onwards, they started having a truly open source project named under open source. So this fork was led by the Amazon Web Services who are now contributing uh, to their own announcement for this open search. So there is some like uh, version seven point something. Uh, it supports open source, supports the backward compatibility, but there is certain versions are there that will not be supported. So you can get into details about this. So if you want, I can share the link in the description so you can just have it. A uh, quick look into it. Okay, so you can see over here. There, this is the link I'll share in the description. So about what is Open Search, how it came up, why you should use it, why was Open Search created. So you can see over here. So there was not released new version of Elasticsearch and Kibana under the permissive Apache license. How does open search relate to open source service? So you can see September 2021, starting with the version 1.0 and renamed the service to from Amazon Elasticsearch service to the 
Amazon Open Source Service. So you can see over here, it is mentioned over here, uh, support legacy, uh, support open source Elasticsearch versions until 7.10. So these are the few things that if you are using older version, you can just check it like, uh, so for this uh, compatibility and all, and you can see over here, what are the features, advanced security. It also support JSON web tokens. If you are integrating with your, any of the applications, so we can have an API module also there in which we can call those uh, APIs in order to uh, get the data. You can uh, put or post, you can perform those things easily. So it's quite highly secure. Then we have the built-in search capabilities also there. Uh, the one thing I like is this one, SQL query syntax and search support, trace analytics. And so lots of things are there. So you can just go through it index rollups, alerting, bucket level alerting is also there if some threshold is being reached. Then we have this open search client supports also for these languages to build the applications basically in order to integrate with our applications. So rest of the things it is like, uh, like sponsors and who maintains, what is the future, how we can get the license for this, and where can I find more open search client and API compatibility? So in the next video, I will show you how we can use the API module. So not in this video, this body, in this video, just we will set up a cluster and then we will proceed in the next video. So let's, you can see over here. Now this is a console. Here we have the options over here, manage cluster serverless ingestion. So I will just go ahead with the manage cluster. I don't want to uh, get into uh, the serverless, uh, I will just deploy a secured open search cluster. So I can just see, uh, I can choose basically which um, which EC2 instance is basically it will be running. So here you need to put the domain, my, and let's put some other name, my open search domain. Okay, so here, these are the by default values that are coming over here. You can directly go ahead, but I will not recommend because you can see over here, the dedicated master node, it is a M6G large. So it, the cost will be huge, huge, huge. So we need not to have that uh, active and standby mode. I will just explain you over here. The domain name, okay. Now domain creation method. So it is telling you to quickly create an open source domain with using multi-AZ. We don't want this multi-AZ with the standby. We will just go ahead with the standard create. Then uh, next uh, we just using for dev test. We don't want to go with the production for high availability and all. Then deployment options, the domain without standby. So I just, just choose one AZ. Okay. Now here version engine 2.11 latest let it be there and these are the data nodes memory optimized or whichever you want so here you can choose over here just i will choose over here general purpose i just need a t3 small search that's it so you can see it is suitable for only for testing it's just giving a warning Anyhow, just this is for the demo purpose. When we have the production grade, that time we can use the M6 and all uh, memory optimized ones. So total number of nodes, in order to avoid any extra billing, just I'm keeping it one. Then EBS storage, let be this one. And EBS volume, general purpose. Okay, you can degrade also these things. Warm and cold data storage. We are not using this. We don't want to enable the dedicated master nodes. We don't want to have, uh, it's a frequency, like hourly basis, it will take a snapshot, but before that only we will delete our cluster. So enable custom endpoint if you want, but you can also add a custom endpoint like 
we need to get it with the AWS certificate and all. So it will, by default, it will create an endpoint that on which we have to click and it will open your open source service that I will show you. Uh, VPC access, now this one need to be public in order to access. And let it be IPv4, no need of having a dual stack. Mm -hmm. Enable fine-grained access control. Okay, let's create over here a master user. Let's say I'm putting over here, let's say admin. You can put anything, whatever you want. But remember this. Okay. Okay. Okay, rest of the things, we don't want the SAML authentication and all. Uh, Cognitive authentication, if you want to, you can just have it. Uh, you can just watch my video for this Cognitive authentication and all. Mm, okay, do, do not set a domain level access policy. We are not going to set it up. And rest of the things, use AWS own key. Uh, no need of defining rest of the things, automatic software update and all. Uh, there are a few, some additional cluster settings are there that we in order to define for the demo purpose. So that's all you can see over here. We have this engine open search 2.11, uh, availability zone one without standby, T3 small search, one total node, and EBS, that is the volume that we have, storage volume, and 100 GIP, network public access, IPv4, fine grained. That's it, create. So creating this cluster, uh, it will take around like 10 to 15 minutes. So we have to wait once it has been created. Then I will show you how to load the, how to view the dashboard and how we can uh, upload, uh, how we can add the demo data and how we can utilize, how we can see those data, how we can visualize those data basically. Okay, now you can see over here, our cluster is up. So active domain processing status, configuration and all. Now uh, here you can see we have a managed cluster dashboard and it will show you your cluster uh, domain health, green, red, yellow, all domains. So you can just click on the domain. So that is, it will give you some endpoint. You can see over here, open search dashboard URL IPv4. So you can just click on that. Okay, let me check. But I provided the user policy. Let me check over here. Yeah, everything looks fine. Let me check the security configuration. So let me check over here. I've made some changes over here. Okay. 
So it will take some time in order to update. You can see it is initializing. Okay, I think it cut into effect immediately. So your open search domain is active now. Now this is what uh, I was trying to achieve. Actually, I, I didn't, it was deny over there. So basically we need to allow that. So you can adjust that, just you can keep a check while uh, setting up your cluster. I'll just show you one more time. So here was the issue. The security configuration. Access policy, it was deny over here. So you can edit and you can allow. It is taking some time to load the dashboard. So you can see over here, uh, it is asking for the username and the password that we have set while creating the cluster. Okay, so this is the default dashboard over here. Okay, just uh, make it confirm. Don't select anything. Uh, we can select, but let it be just the by default global one. Okay, now Now you can see over here, we can visualize and analyze the data. Let's go to the sample data that we have. You can see over here, sample e-commerce orders. We have over here, um, flight data. We have some web logs of some application. So let's say uh, if I go to the, let's say uh, sample flight data, or you can just look, go ahead with the let's say sample e-commerce orders. It will take some time to add the sample data. So I'm not showing you how to add a data source and all in today's video. That is like, uh, it's still in a preview mode if you check the documentation details, uh, like how you can keep the document in the S3 bucket and how you can connect to the data source, how you can visualize the data and all. But still it is in preview mode and document is keep on changing. So I will recommend like uh, have a look later on, like once you have finished set up with this, then you can uh, go through uh, like uh, setting up a data source over here uh, from the open source service. We can add the like when you are setting up a cluster, that time you can choose like from what will be your data source and also you have to create a separate domain for that. Then you can choose my like uh, files are in there in the S3 bucket. It can be a JSON file or it can be an Excel file. It can be anything that will automatically generate. So this is now you can see over here, we can view the data over here. So this is the by default dashboard. These are, these are the different uh, widgets that are being get getting added over here. You can see average sales price, uh, sales by gender, uh, then e-commerce total revenue, then how much this is a heat map showing over here, like uh, which products are being sold by the category and all, and how much promotions were there. And you can see over here sales count map by the country wise, you can see it's quite handy. You can just see over here. And what are the top selling products over here? 
and these are the columns that are being the values that are being shown over here now if you see over here we have certain filters over here so this is the detail about it and you can choose over here what are the like uh, manufacturers so once you choose let's say i'm choosing over here let's say ocean navigations and you can just refresh so you can see it's a little bit taking a uh, processing takes some time okay that has been shown now you can see uh, how much quantity category so select the category also men's accessories apply changes Okay, so this is how, how many products are being sold for the men's average spend, total revenue from the men's collection, revenue trousers, revenue watches. So what are the important uh, top selling products in the men category and all. So you can just filter those records. Now you can see it, there is a, uh, we have over here, a search we can have. You can see when you're filtering those records, those ad filters are getting added over here it's quite handy so you can uh, like uh, you have a data query language you can just uh, mention over here manufacturers i'll just remove this filter from here and you can have some dates you can choose a uh, dates you can choose some uh, relative start date you can choose now uh, you can just put some absolute values like a start and end date. You can choose the date and time. It's your choice. You can do it. And you can just click on the update. Now, uh, if you see over here, when you click on the add filter, so you can just uh, filter. These are the filters that we can have over here. Let's say, uh, Let's say manufacture or let's say geo city name. Select exist anything. So we can also check if you want to check the default values, you can just check it. So basically, it's showing you all the cities. We can just, uh, it is still processing over here. In order to go into more detail, let me delete this one. We can just go to the portion over here. And you can see over here. We can just click on this. Inspect the document. So this is the data that we have. You can have it in a JSON. Um, you can also filter the records by gender. You can see geo IPCT is, let's say I've copied this one. And if I go to this over here, let's then I will mention over here, add, let's say geo IPCT name. It is, is, equal to, you can select a value over here, it will automatically populate and save. So once you hit save, you can see it start processing. You can see it is processing, so it will just show you, you can see the values are getting changed. It is just showing you for the New York City. So you can see over here, rest of the values are being vanished. So total 220 is there from the New York, and this is how it is filtering the other records. Now, if you check over here, you will find that, let me show you the JSON. This is the JSON over here, you can copy paste. So in this one, you can check over here, the geo city, uh, the city name is mentioned as New York. So you can just have a look into this. 
if you want in a tabular format and if you want to view as a single document view surrounding like how many records stand up and down you can see and this is the one that is being filtered it's being highlighted over here so this is how we can like there can be certain criteria like you want to find out the person whose last name first name or city or how many orders were there from the from the new york city or which country is being mostly accessed so you can have all the details now if i go over here this is a dashboard for the e-commerce over here so if i go to the discover over here so it will show me the total number of hits on my application that i'm having uh, as per the date so you can see over here this is a source total source now if i want to check like say currency or if i click on this i can like uh, have a look there is only euro and if i want to check the category so men's clothing women's clothing these are the categories so these are the top five values you can just uh, click on that and you can get it, the rest of the values. And you can see uh, continent names. So we can also visualize into a separate window if you want. I'll just click on it and just open it a different window. So you can see over here number of hits and all. Now suppose if you want to, uh, again, you can see you can uh, filter it by category. You can just put it under the category. So this category, you can check number of orders. Then you can remove the fields from the table. So these are the fields over here. You can check. So by default, it is showing you all the, you can see this is the whole source. Now, if you want certain particular column to be used, you can just, uh, let's say, I want to put the customer name. You can just drag and drop over here. Let's say I want to put it over here, a category. So you will get it over here, the columns. You can see category over here. So if you don't want it, you can just drag it down. So it will show you the whole source. You can just remove it from here. So this is how you can like, uh, it's taking some time. This is how you can view in a tabular format. If you want to filter some uh, fields, you can just drag it and drop it over here in the selected fields over here. Now, uh, coming back to this one, you can see, uh, again, the same uh, DQL you can have. You can put a like a search criteria over here. You can just click on the filter. You can see geo city, city name. You can just put it over here and you can edit your queries and you can filter your field names by using this option over here. And again, the date you have over here. Now, another one more thing over here, like suppose if you want to inspect this particular record, you can just click on this. So this is a separate view. So this is more in order to like, uh, you know, uh, discover the things uh, you can see over here, geo city name. So we can apply those options over here. Now, if you want to go back to the dashboard thing, so this is more, uh, with a view to explore along with the fields, what are the fields and all, what are the, like, you know, like what are the key values that is having. So if you check over here, I just opened that one. So you can see this is the uh, continents that we have. So if you see over here that we have in the X axis and Y axis, so it's showing you the uh, continent names North America. So it is showing you the counts also, how many records are there from this particular continent. So it is very, very flexible. You can also change your, uh, you need to make it sure like what you want to show you on the Y axis and what you want to show on the X axis. Accordingly, you can just, you know, add uh, different options like what you want to do on the X axis and the Y axis. What do you want to show in the descending or ascending order? You can just change those options. So this is how you can have an individual one. You can also explore for the uh, country name or email, customer phone number. You can just uh, like, you know, like a uh, lookup values, you can have it like what are the different kinds of products they are selling? What are the different uh, manufacturers we are having? 
So we can have a quick look. It will show you the top five. Then you can just, uh, you can uh, see how much percentage it is. And then you can just, we can just uh, click on this and we can add it to the a separate, basically it's adding a separate column down there. Okay, so this is how you can utilize the option. So it went up, you can see, manufacture and order date. So I'm just removing it from here because I just want to keep the source that contains everything in the form of JSON or a tabular format. It's a little bit slow, but uh, it's okay. So you can see the source is being added over here. Now, if you check over here, I just want to like, suppose if you want to view, so you can have it a separate window for it. Uh, it's, it's getting added. Uh, you can just also change it from here if you want. So this is for filter. You can just go back and you can change this instead of using this. We can add uh, from the bucket which we want to use it. By removing this, then we can add split series, split chart, aggression, date range, histogram, these things we can add it. So this is how you can just check the lookup values. I just wanted to show you something over here that I'm not able to click over here. You can, okay, let me add over here. And then we can, Let me remove from here. It's taking time to process. Let me check with the currency. Okay, let's say if I wanted to add this category over here, you can see uh, my data getting filtered over here. So if you want to uh, visualize this over here, you can visualize like this also. Women's clothing, you can filter it out. You can just have inspect. And you can just view a single document also if you want. So this is how you can visualize those values, view surrounding documents and all. Now coming back to the dashboard over here. So this is how we can change the things in the dashboard. And we can set up or filter the records over here. Okay, so you can visualizations if you want to save it, like these are the visualizations that are being added in the widget. So if you want to modify those things, you can modify it from here. So you can also create your own visualization. So I'm not going into detail, like if you want to create your own data table values, so you can have your uh, sample data over here, then you need to choose uh, what count you want to show it, add a filter and also this, this visualization will be, then this visualization you can add it to your dashboard over here you can add it. So this is how you can, even you can save your search queries and all, and you can also save current query, you can also do that. So this was all about uh, the open source dashboard. So I hope you understood like how to utilize this. Uh, you can try exploring with the sample data. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to interact with the Open Search API. So uh, how we can utilize this, how we can uh, like basically uh, index a doc. Then we can have this. I'll be using this uh, same uh, interface. 
in order to show you. I won't be using any Postman and all, just I'll be using this. And then I can show you various search queries and all. So we will work on this on the next video. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Please do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.